Hey everyone, my name is Jacob Gago. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I've been using the Asus PG42 UQ for a few days now, and here is my review of the good and the bad. In terms of the specs, it's not really a 42 inch, it's really specifically 41.50 inch screen, 4K resolution, and of course it's an OLED monitor. You could get 138 hertz if overclocked, so it's not quite 144, but you do get 138. Also, there is a one millisecond response time, and this unit is also G-SIG compatible. It does have anti-clare coating as well on the front uh, to avoid certain reflections depending on your setup. In terms of the design and ports, quite honestly, the design of the monitor isn't that bad. However, the stand, I do find it a little bit intrusive. It, it kind of pokes out. Um, so depending on your desk, you might actually lose some space. Right below the monitor are two speakers. Surprisingly, these are pretty good. I did not feel like I needed to connect a soundbar. Um, so for some people, they might like it, some people don't, but I think this is really good. Behind the unit, you will find the ability to have a VESA mount as well as there is a built-in heat sink to protect against burn-in. Also, you'll find ports such as the DisplayPort 1.4, which is great, meaning you don't have to upgrade your graphics card to an HDMI 2.1. You have upstream ports, a bunch of USBs, two HDMI 2.1 ports, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and a tripod dock. Right next to it, you'll also find a USB to power it on. So it's pretty convenient. They really did a good job in thinking of that. You could also tilt the unit forward and backwards. Obviously this means you can't swivel left or right, but they give you that ability to move it forward and also back. Now let's review the good things about the monitor. It actually shares the same panel with one of my other favorite monitors, which is the LG C2. This is also a great all-in-one unit for productivity, gaming, and watching TVs. When I was working on this on productivity, it really felt pretty good. Everything is crisp clear and sharp especially on word documents excel uh, you would not have a problem with this as also this is a monitor and they knew that people would be using this for productivity gaming on this i was playing the new modern warfare 2 the graphics and everything was just great i didn't really have any complaints watching movies on this as well was just as great i do however know that from all this especially with gaming and watching movies the anti clear coating wasn't as cool. I wish it was, you know, without this, so it's a lot sharper, but for productivity, obviously this wouldn't matter so much. Another good thing is the actual size, the 42 inch, as they say, even though it's 41.5, it's actually really nice to have just one big screen without any bezels, like my prior multi-monitor setup. Also, the monitor comes with a nice remote. Obviously this is not a TV, so it's not gonna give you any functions to go through your Hulu channels or whatever it may be, but it does allow you to change settings on the fly. And also there's a joystick right underneath that also makes it really, really easy to navigate the settings. And I must say out of all the monitors I've ever used, this is the most convenient to change settings. Also, it does have wake up and sleep features. Uh, like the LG didn't have that, but I am aware that you could set that up, but the wake up and sleep features are already installed and ready to go. So you don't have to worry about your OLED monitor staying on continuously. Not many monitors look really good with the MacBook Pro. So this is also another good thing to know that your MacBook Pro is gonna be pretty sharp with the monitor. Another thing, and I did mention this earlier, is the DisplayPort 1.4a. It's good to know that you could use whatever graphics card you have and not be forced to upgrade to a 2.1 HDMI graphics card like I had to when I had the LG C2. In terms of the bad, these might be deal breakers for certain people. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the anti-glare coating. I won't lie, I don't really mind it so much if I was only using this for productivity, but in terms of the fact that I actually do gaming on this and also watch movies, it's not as clear. I won't lie, I don't like it. Number two, this thing is expensive as heck, as opposed to the LG C2. At the time of recording this, the LG G2 actually dropped a lot and now it's $999. Whereas this is literally $1,500 with tax included in the US. Is it really worth the price difference? Again, stick around to the end. Number three is the ABL, which is auto dimming. They claim uniform brightness. Um, quite honestly, I think it's a little misleading because they make it seem like ABL is completely gone but when you turn on the feature, it actually reduces the brightness. And also, even with the reduction, it still dims. 
it's just not as obvious but it actually still dims number three i'm not really too sure 100 percent how i feel with the color even though it's using the same lg panel i do strongly believe the colors were a lot much better on the lg c2 the remote doesn't light up does that really matter probably not but you know for some people who might be in dark room environments this does not light up when i was using the mouse i do want to notice that there was a slightly noticeable lag and i don't know if it's because it's a macbook pro at 16 hertz my main windows computer doesn't have a graphics card in it right now so i can't test it out if it's a macbook thing but regardless it shouldn't be doing that so there was a lag also i would like to mention that so what is my conclusion well for 500 dollars more quite honestly i don't think it's worth the upgrade for me i'm actually going to take this back i did want to try this because i knew i would not rest my mind unless i got my hands on it and i know a lot of people are still trying to find their hands on this that's another bad thing is the shortage on this um but for me i it's not for me for 500 dollars more to say that you know uniform brightness and it's not actually uniform you still encounter dimming i'm not sure i really like that plus the anti-clear coating is also another turn off for me i'm not sure how much i feel about that um, i do prefer crispier clearer pictures so i am thinking of going back to the lg c2 since it's actually dropped in price at the time of recording this is 9.99 so i definitely want to take advantage of that also it's not really a tv it's a monitor so that you are going to be limited to the monitor features so for 1500 dollars, i honestly don't think it's quite the money but i could be wrong maybe you would enjoy this but this is my review overall let me know in the comments below if you're thinking of the PG42UQ, the LG C2, or some other monitor. I'm really curious to see what you end up picking. Also, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.